um, OBS was shipping out, you know, you know how it goes. So it kicked me out. So, um, that's okay. We'll just, you know, combine the two situations and call it a day. But no biggie. Let's get back to it, shall we? Hopefully you're still here, you know. Um... I'm just double checking some stuff before I get back into it. Okay. Cool. Your quiet moment with Sella is broken by a loud, persuasive sort snort. Well, what was that? <laughs> Haha, <laughs> no need to panic. That's just the sound of a deer. That's just that's just the sound deers make when they want to earn the rest of the herd about big scary predators like us. Let's check it out. See, she is the embodiment of we heard dangerous sounds. Let's look over there. We shouldn't look over there. There's nothing to look over there. We should leave. Like we were warned to do. As you and Stella hear the footfalls of animals retreating into the woods, she reaches for her flashlight. Oh, what are we going to see? What are we going to see? Ew! 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 That deer does not look okay. That deer looks kind of fucked up. Not going to hold you. A single deer remains behind the hens, the staring beam of Stella's flashlight with Gretchen whines and pulls at her harness. And then it's gone. That gave me goosebumps. I'm not even going to hold you. Jeez, Gretchen, calm down. You're going to hurt yourself. She cannot handle deer. When she gets like this, I usually have to pick her up and hold her. She has a bad habit of slipping her harness and when she wants to go after something. You're too much of a potato, and they don't make a harness that fits potatoes, do they? There was something wrong with that deer. <laughs> Did you see its face? <laughs> now that you mention it, there was something a little off. A little off? It had, like, straight tumors or something. <laughs> I bet it was a an abyss. Maybe a tumor? It's not like wild animals gets taken care of. But that, but so they can get bigger and bigger. Poor thing. But that's not much we could do about it. Stella, that does not look normal. That looks really odd, and I'm pretty sure it would have died. But you know, whatever. Potato, potato. It's never too late to turn back. You know, I don't usually think I'm cut up for this sort of thing. Those deer generally spooked me, and I don't know if I. And I don't know if you want me weighing you down. Don't be too hard on yourself. They're just an, accustomed to the sound of the... F you're just not accustomed to the forest yet. As a black alien, I feel like Stella wants us to die. And if this were me and this said forest, um, yeah, I would tell Stella she can, like, fuck off. And I would be uh, somewhere else because this is definitely not for me. Um, no thanks. The goosebumps on my skin, which I didn't even know I could get, are telling me to run. And that's, you know, nature's way of saying, bitch, get out. And I shall do just that. <laughs> when you go on your first few night hikes, everything sounds like a horrible monster. That's just waiting for the opportunity to shred you to bits. But eventually you, uh, but eventually you realize it's just mostly deers and raccoons. That Deer did not look normal, Stella. It didn't look decent, Stella. We need to leave, Stella. Which probably won't go after you. Here, let's take a quick snack break before we can get into the night's activities. Maybe some food will help settle your nerves. I don't want to eat after whatever just came about, but sure. As you set it down to rest, Stella breaks open a bag of assorted snacks. Well... I see dried apricots. My favorite. 
You grab a handful of dried apricots. I actually dried them myself. I wound up getting a bunch of apricots for free from Janie a while back, and we don't know what else to do with them. It's wild how easy it is to make your own dried fruit. Um, really, maybe I should try it out. That sounds cool. That actually sounds really cool. Why can't we do that? Let's go home and you teach me how to make apricots, how to make dried apricots, shall we? Let's do that. Oh yeah, you slice up the, your fruit of choice and put them in the oven at like 200 degrees, uh, set a timer for four hours and come back to a whole mess of dried fruit. Do make sure you set a timer though. That's the most important part of cooking, honestly. Never assume you'll be able to tell how much time has passed. I guess that actually applies to a lot of things. You would start to settle down on the overlook, snacks in hand, as the quiet sounds of the evening wild nights wash over you. Gretchen gnaws at a stick, distracted from for the time being. So tell me what it's like in Orion. Do you have a house? An apartment? Do you live with family, roommates, and pets? Could we not do this in a safer environment? But I guess this is how it's going to be. Tell me what it's like to be Nebby. Alright, we can come up with our own lifestyle. Let's see here. Hmm. I live in an internet cafe. I'd rather not say. Um. That doesn't sound ideal. I live in a doorless apartment when it, that floods whenever it rains. I live in a stingy studio apartment. And it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. At first it was kind of nice to finally have a space that was just mine, but now it just feels cramped. It's like I'm stuck in a closet alone and no one can come and let me out because I chose this for myself and as far as they know, I'm happy being there. The light flicker, the toilet is constantly getting backed up because the landlady upstairs keeps flushing her damn cat litter. It smells like cigarettes for some reason and it's home to an ex extremely durable population of roaches but I guess it's home I do what I can to spruce up the place I got a plant you know how they say living things are supposed to brighten up a room when you put it like that I wonder if staying in an old mansion is a step up or a step down for you maybe just sideways have you tried looking for a different place or maybe finding a roommate I can assure you Stella with everything in my being my apartment looks nothing and I'm so grateful compared to the luxury that we are currently staying in. I can assure you it is absolutely much better to not be in the place like that. I implore you that it's oh not that great. Uh, it's got to be a better apartment than a big old city like Orion. Um, I had enough bad roommates. I've been saving up for something better. That sounds more ideal than what I would say. Oh, I hear you. I've been saving up for something better. Oh, yeah? So, what do you do for a living? I'm an alien who streams on Switch and who occasionally yells at her streaming uh, service because, you know... Well, not my streaming service, but my streaming device, because it hates me. Uh, oh, well, look, that's actually an option. I'm a streamer. I'm actually a streamer. What do you know? Oh, no way. A fellow content creator. That's awesome. I knew we had a lot in common. What sort of streams do you do? I play video games, as I, as I do. But I don't know if you could call it that. I'm sure. I mostly stream video games. That's cool. I have to check out your channel sometime this week. How do you like it? Um. It's a good question. How do I like streaming? Hmm. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Most people I meet tend to raise their eyebrows when I tell them what I do, but I love it. It might not be much, but it makes me feel like I'm taking control of my own destiny. Believe me, I can relate. I don't think I'd give up what I do for anything. A crisp breeze passes over you. What about you? Let's talk about you and your living situation since you were nosy about mine. 
Gretchen and I live in a little house just outside of town. It's actually the house I grew up in, so a lot of the pleasant memories attached to it, and I'm glad I could keep it in the family. Oh, how nice! My great-grandfather built that house, and um, must have done a great job because it's just as sturdy as I've ever been. Can I live with you? Can I stay with you for the week? Honestly, I really don't want to stay in this house. I implore you that I really don't want to stay in that house. Please don't make me stay there. Um, is it just you? Yeah, it's just me and Gretchen. My parents died a few years back. Oh, that's unfortunate. But it's okay. I've done my morning. Life goes on. And we still live in a, our beautiful family home. Just me and Gretchen. It could be a lot worse. Who's paying the bills? <laughs> um, What were they like? Did you get along? They were amazing. Two of the nicest people you've ever met. And interesting, too. My dad was a bit of a regal legend among hunters and trappers. He always uh, out in the woods and out on the trail for something. We were certainly had some interesting dinners because of him. He had to learn how to fend for himself, you see, since his family didn't have much growing up. So he learned how to hunt and trap and got damn good at it. He always made sure I had food and that I knew how to get get it if I ever found myself too far away from a grocery store. I could make a pretty good salad from with just what's in this clearing if I had to, though it wouldn't exactly taste great. As for my mom, she was a saint. She was a local vet. The lady of all the farms in the county knew to call her if their animals were in need. I'm pretty sure then if your mother was a vet, she would have recognized or taught you that animal tumors look nothing like that. It's still making my skin crawl. <laughs> she was smart as a whip and strong to boot. Turns out pulling calves out of 1,600 pound cows all day is a great way to build muscle. Jesus, what a big ass baby. But she was gentle too. Even the smallest mouse would get the proper care in her hands. I'm sure she's m most of the reason Gretchen's here I'm sure she's most of the reason Gretchen here is one of the oldest dogs I've ever met. So yeah, those were my parents. Oh, well, you know. How nice. How sweet. Um, what's with me trying to say I guess we're members of the Dead Moms Club? That's not a nice thing to say. Who wrote this? <laughs> Um, I can relate. My mom died pretty recently, so I get it. It's alright if you need to talk about other things. Oh, thanks, Nambi. That's really sweet of you. How are you holding up? Um... I'm okay. Hanging in there. It was a long time coming, so it wasn't a surprise. I kind of come to terms with it by now, uh, by the time it was actually happened. And it's not all bad. She doesn't have to be in pain anymore. That's a relief. The hospital bills are another story, though. Yeesh. I can imagine how bad that must be. It's just a salt in the wound at that point. See, every time we hear noises, I'm ready to go the fuck home. But Stella's just like, oh, let's just chill. Stella immediately packs her bags and slings it over her shoulder. Look at her, now she wants to look scared. No, no, a few minutes ago you were just like, no, we're great, we're good. No, no, I'm fucking terrified. <sighs> that wasn't a sound meant for human ears. Whatever m made it is close. Here, hold Gretchen's leash for me and let's check this out. No, let's not check this out. Stop wanting to check things out. Look, look at that shit. Look, every time she puts the flashlight, some weird gonna come out. You and Stella inch towards the tree line and she shines her flashlight into the woods. As you approach, a series of weak clucks come out, call out from a nearby bush. It's one of the chickens! Maybe Duke's bird weren't eaten after all. Ah! The poor bird! What the hell? 
What the hell was that? Hold on, I gotta play that back. No, you don't! Holy shit. I'm guessing it, it must be maybe two or three feet tall? Doesn't look hairy either, so I think we can rule out a skunk ape. But whatever it was, it has one of Duke's chickens. It looks like it's headed north. Let's go after it. Let's not! I feel like let's not head towards danger, yeah? Let's not. Um... Um, let's not. Where's the option of let's leave Stella behind with her, her, her nonsense? Oh my god. How do I return? I didn't, I didn't access. Um, d do we have to? I feel like Ron right now when he's in the forest of spiders, only I probably would have liked that because I like spiders. But like, oh god. Now's not the time to hesitate. If we're catching this thing, we've got to go now. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to catch it. We could leave the poor chicken. Oh, poor chicken behind. It's terrible. Let's just go. I actually have goosebumps. It is actually bothering me. Oh my god. This is not a drill. This is terrifying. And off she goes. Stella sprints to the woods in pursuit, leaving you no choice but to run after her. Gretchen excitedly pulling you along by her leash. Why are y'all so determined to die tonight? Look, look at this bitch. Look, look, and she fell. <laughs> like... And she trips, just like in every horror movie. Somebody fucking trips. Ugh. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm alright. I tripped on something weird. Oh no, that poor thing. It must have been one of Duke's. Oh Jesus, it's still alive. Kill it! Throw a rock at it! Bury it! Do something else! Um... I'm not brave. Don't go near that. Jesus, Stella, don't go near that. That thing is diseased. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not going to touch it. Not with my hands, at least. Girl, there are better things right now. We don't need to film everything. And hey, I'm sorry this is turning out to be so grisly. I swear that it's not normally like this. We can go home after I film this, if that's what you want. I wanted to leave yesterday. <laughs> Yes, please. This is way more than I bargained for. Yeah, this is unexpected for sure. Let me just film this for a second and we can head back. Ahem. It seems we found one of Duke's chickens, folks. And she's not looking good. I am hesitate to speculate, but she definitely seems to have some sort of growth under her skin. Could be a tumor. Could be something else. Either way, I don't think there's much that can be done for her at this point. Jeez. I'm going to have to put some, some sort of massive content warning for this video. I know you guys can't hear that. But there's whispers in my ear. Hold on. I'm going to blast the volume so you can hear it. Okay, Stella. I think it's time for us to go. Um... There are things whispering names I don't know of, and I think I'm up uh, uh, here. Time to hit the dusty trail, see the end of the road, not do this shit. Goodbye, goodbye. What in the Sam's Hill are you doing out here? Didn't I tell you to? Birdie? Oh, Birdie, what's wrong, darling? Good God, leave the chicken alone. Did you see what did this to her? No, but I'm pretty sure we can hear them. <laughs> we see whatever do the same bird, but I think we can hear them right now. Uh, don't tell me you're all about the call up and stuff is nonsense. It's not nonsense. I'm hearing voices. 
Duke. I'm sorry. We're on the trail when we find her like this. Put that camera away for God's sakes, girl. I don't want to be in another one of your videos. No one needs to see me like this. No one needs to see Birdie like this. You wouldn't put her online, would you? Not when she's like this, all swollen and hurting. Duke, did you hear what Nebby said? I think they're coming closer. We need to go. Now. Not now, but right now. Come out, you sons of bitches. Duke, don't shoot it. We don't have no idea what'll happen. You hear that, Stella? They ain't the sound of something peace-like. Whatever these things are, they'll pay for what they did to my girls. Come on, whatever your name is. Grab that flashlight and help me line up a good shot. As the, tree, as the creatures in the tree line grow louder and numerous, and more numerous, Gretchen violently strains against their harness. Um! Let's find out what it is, shall we? Since we're apparently we're going into the deep end. Holy shit! Oh, what is that? You dive into the flashlight and swing your body towards the wood. Oh, it's moving! I said aim that thing quick. I it's moving. All right, here we go. We got light up the darkness. Perfect. Oh, he got it. Just grazed it, but that should make it pretty easy to track, huh, Stella? Yeah, it's a bloody trail. It's pretty hard to miss. Guess we know it wasn't a mountain lion after all. So it didn't look like any crepit I've ever heard of, either. This is going to be one hell of a video. As your heartbeat settles, you realize Gretchen stopped tugging at her leash. You look down only to find an empty harness and the paw prints of a runaway dog. Wait, where's Gretchen? Where's my dog? <laughs> no! <laughs> oh no, did we kill Gretchen? Oh no. She must have slipped out of her harness. I'm so sorry, Stella. I tried to hold on to her. Gretchen, I'm coming for you. Leave the dog. Our lives are at stake. I'd be damned if I let her chase after those things alone. Alone, you have no choice but to follow Duke and Stella into the darkness. Because why not? Guess I'll die. <laughs> You think to yourself, to the, to the core, as you, as the dark of the night surrounds you, the sound of snapping branches cuts into your ears. If you're going to die, you might as well be on your feet, surrounded by other people rather than the woods alone, by a monster or slow starvation. You steal your nerves and run after Duke and Stella. Oh! Oh, there's more! Oh, that's that's just great. Look at them. They have happy faces. They're smiling at me. My goosebumps have on full alert right now. As you push deeper into the woods, the unearthly sounds once again surround you. Oh, God, they're back. Oh, look, they're just happily sitting in the tree. I know we're just, we'll just have to keep pushing forward. I'm okay. I'm rather just... I want to leave. I'm perfectly fine. I don't want to keep going. Damn it, girl. Oh, they're all over. Oh, and they have teeth. Oh, are you... Just the sounds in my ear that are bothering me. Are you trying to get us lost? Slow down. I'm just following the trail. Holy shit, I think we're gonna be sick. Lord, that smell. Are they gone? Oh! Oh! The shrieks back burst into the whispers. The shrieks pulled back into steady whispers. As you, Stella, and Duke stumbled upon the portrait of dozens of dead and dying animals. At the edge of it, an immobilized Gretchen gurgles in pain as one of the creatures looms over here. A sinking realization pulls out your gut. This is their nest, and you are and you are surrounded. Gretchen! As Stella steps forward towards the nest, Duke pulls her back. Mm. 
Holy shit, what do we do? Holy shit, what do we do? There's gotta be a dozen of those things in those trees. They're circling us to protect their rod, or whatever it is they've been planting in our animals. We've got to get out of here while we still can. Uh, you're right, there's nothing we can do now. But Jesus Christ, I can't leave Gretchen like this. Dude, give me your- We're not gonna shoot the dog! We're gonna shoot the dog. Oh my god. I'm not thinking about it. She's my dog, Duke. We can't save her, but I'll be damned if I leave her behind to suffer for the rest of these animals. You don't have- I didn't mean to press that one! Hold up! How do I go back? How do I go back? How do I go back? No! I wanna go back! I didn't mean that! I didn't mean that! Fella grabs Duke's gun and takes care well, takes careful aim. We killed the dog! Run! Oh my god! As soon as the gun fires, you and Stella and Duke spring into the woods. The unearthly hollers whisper of the n As the gun fires, Stella and Duke sprint back into the woods. The unearthly hollers and whispers of their nest nipping at your heels. In the highest breadth of the trees and down on the forest floor, they're all around you, casually keeping pace with all the, with their all-out sprint. Yo, their voices are driving me crazy. Leave me alone! Quick, my truck down this way! Oh! As you make it to the road, but three creatures stand behind you and Duke's truck. Leave me alone! What do you, uh, I think you've stolen from them. They want the animal. You stole it from the Duke, you had to give them back with theirs. And he's right, Duke. Birdie, she's part of their broad now. Is, that, is this what you want? Is this what you want, you sons of bitches? Fine, take her. Take her and leave us be. Oh my god, that's so disturbing. She had to kill her dog. Duke, get in the truck and let's get the hell out of here. Duke, do we have to take the truck back? I can walk, just walk. Those creatures left. I'll be fine. Stella's not really the time. Stella, oh my fucking god. Alright, I can do this. The fear of you sit in silence as Duke drives back to town. The ride feels both like eternity and like nothing at all. Eventually it's over and you find yourself outside of Stella's home. Thanks for taking me home, Duke. Any time, but Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, what were those things? I have no idea. I've never heard of anything like them, but I got a ton of footage. Nothing really clear, but it's a start. Mm. I'm gonna check in with Bo. He'll be worrying about me. You and your friends stay safe. Looks like those things don't follow us, but, well, no point in talking about the butts. Just look out for yourselves. Take care, Duke. Mm. That was her only- that was her last family member. And she had to kill it. That's so- I had a feeling that you have to choose between either Stella, Duke, or Gretchen. And to be perfectly honest, I think we made a safe choice. I think we made a safer choice by killing Gretchen. Uh, given that Gretchen was already old, she was already like- she lived a long life. It's- a <sighs> You have to, I'm looking at it as a positive way. Gretchen was like 80 years old. Uh, she was a really old dog. She lived a decent life. Um, and maybe this was the best for her. You know, I'm not saying it was right. I'm not saying it was the best option, but I feel like maybe Gretchen, you know, is she was already in pain. They were already trying to tackle her. <sighs> Anyway, let's keep going. I I do feel for Gretchen. I really do. Because, like, why did we have to kill a dog, man? Like, not the dog. Anything but the dog, man. Man, not 
the dog. Alright. And here you are, back in town, away from the woods, and no one but sell it in sight. Your phone buzzes in your pocket. Now that you're back in town, you must finally have reception again. Six missed calls from Tabitha, and 13 text messages. Wow. Let me tell her I'm okay. You text Tabitha back and let her know you're okay. Your message is unread. Um... Let me call her, then. You try to call Tabitha back, but it goes straight to voicemail. I think I'm in trouble. That's a lot of missed calls and texts from someone from you-know-who. Maybe Tabby's just worried about you. God, what a mess this night's been. I'm sorry about Gretchen. There's nothing we can do. I just have to accept what happened and move on. She was 17 after all. It's not like she had many years left. But why did it have to happen like that? It's my fault. I feel like it's my fault. It's my fault. I should have grabbed her. I could have grabbed her. I really could have... I really could have grabbed her. Oh my god. I feel so awful. Because she was such a sweet dog. And she didn't even look that old. Oh my god. I feel so awful. I just feel awful, man. Like, Jesus. Nebby, you were in an impossible situation and you had to make a difficult choice. It's done, and I'm not going to hold it against you. Neither of us needs to go back and relive that moment. Yo, she is so strong. She is so strong. So strong. What do you make of everything we saw? I don't know. I haven't seen or read anything about that. Although, maybe... We've got to find out more about these things. The library doesn't open for a while, so any real research will have to wait until the morning. That being said, there is someone in town who might have some useful information. Her place isn't far, and we should head over there now before it gets any later. Um... I should check- Like, wait, let's make sure our cousin doesn't think anything worse happened. I should probably check in on Tabitha. My friend's place is on the way back, and, and stopping by shouldn't take long. You sure you don't want to stop in first? I don't want to do this alone. Uh, she just lost her dog. I don't want to make ribs with my cousin, though. When you say it like that, how can I say no? Let's head out. We're investigating. I'm pretty sure my cousin's gonna kill me and be like, "Ugh, I can't stand that bitch." <laughs> I just have this feeling my cousin's gonna be like, "Ugh," and I'm gonna be like, "Um, funny story." <laughs> I hope she's still awake. Still on that summit door. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot a shadowy figure staring at you from across the road. You didn't hear it approach. Um, Stella, something's watching us. She turns to look. Don't say my name. Don't you say my name. Leave me alone. Um, goodbye. I don't need to be here. I, you know, thank you for the warm welcome, but I'm pretty sure I don't need to see this. Whoever is this is, his presence has chilled you to your soul. Goodbye! Let me in the room! Let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in! Before you respond, the door behind you swings open. An older woman stands in the entryway. Go home, Wang. I can't help you tonight. Um... Do you know such a fabulous creature? I, I was unaware that you two were acquainted. You know, maybe I should let you two catch up. Sounds like something I should do. I should probably let you two get acquainted. That's it. It's a spooky season. So, uh, hey, girl.
How you doing? You look back and the figure's already gone, disappeared into the shadow of the night. I'm sorry about that, Stella. Some people just can't be helped. What brings you out here so late? And who is this? Oh, hi, Miss Force... Forces. This is Nebby. Is it okay if we come in? You and Miss Forces briefly lock eyes, still blinding and overpowering in her aura that just looking at her feels like she's staring directly into the sun. Her gaze pierces... Peers exactly through you, and in that moment, you feel wholly known. And then the moment passes, and you see only the middle aged woman before you. So she's basically like, she's like us, in which, like, she can see things. And I guess that was just our moment of bonding and being like, I'm, I'm like you, I can see things too, kind of situation. Okay, no problem. Of course, you're in luck. I just put out, I put water for a biscuit's tea. And for goodness sake, will you call me Sybil? You're an adult now, after all. Welcome to my little nook. Oh, it looks so nice. It's got tea as life. Some black people up in here. I'm assuming that's her husband. to finally meet you, Nebby. I'm sorry to hear about your mother. Vivian was such a lovely soul and she's been sorely missing the holler. And now poor Paraline, Paraline is going, is gone as well. But do let me know if you need anything. If there's anything you need while we're, you're in town. Not with the nuts! Stop with the nuts! Um, just, you know, quick question. If, if I could, if you would, if you would indulge me. Who is that outside? This is a very sick man. You don't need to worry about him. There's there's so much I I have to worry about if, if you will understand. He looks more than sick, but you know, I guess you knew my mom. Of course, my dear. She was a dear friend of mine for many years. She is such a she was such a lovely woman. Not from what I'm hearing from everybody else. You should come by sometime. I can delight you with the unsavory tales of her youth. Uh, how did you know that she died? Oh, Perilyn was a chatty woman. Not much went on that I didn't get a deer full of. Bless her heart. I never met Perilyn. You don't have to pass on your condolences to me. I have no feelings about that woman. Oh, that's fair, child. It seems like the right thing to do. Right then. Now that we've gotten everything out of the way, we need your help. Oh yes, I suppose pleasant trees can wait for another time. What's got you here so late? You seem troubled. Did you miss the bloody man outside? Did you miss the bloody, encrypted man outside? I didn't miss him. Ah. You know, about the weird stuff, right? Unexplainable stuff? I'm not sure I follow, dear. I know which oils for which aches. I know a bit about classical spiritualism. Just what sort of unexplainable things are you talking about? We ran into some creatures out in the woods. These things. I don't know how to describe them. Um, I can't say much about local wildlife. My daughter has always been a, had a brighter gift for nature than I. This isn't... This wasn't the local wildlife, Miss Sybil. Here, I can show you. Stella pulls out the camera and tilts the screen towards Sybil. Ah, uh, one of your little videos. Yeah, that's not one of our little videos. Yeah, it's horrible, ain't it? Where was this? Up in the mountain to the northeast, northwest, within the town limits? Yes, I see. Is there any way to make the video bigger and louder if you can? I need to plug the memory card into a computer. I can go back and get Vine. No need. Uh, Kaniko should be still awake. She can lend us hers. You better come with me, Stella. I'm sure she'll be more willing to help a friend than her nosy mother. 
Kanika, come out. We could use a little help. What, Mom? Oh. Black girl on duty. We got a black girl on duty. Hey, hey. It's Stella. Hey, Stella. And a stranger. What are you doing in my house? Not with the boiled nuts. Hi, I'm Nevi. Tabitha's cousin? Yep. Sweetie, we're wondering if we could borrow your laptop. Stella and her friend have a video to show us. It's really important, Kanika. Okay. My room's a mess. I'll just bring it out here. Heads up, Kanika. This is graphic. There's a lot of dead and sick animals on the recording. You know, I've had a harder stomach than any of our friends. I'm pressing play. Silence watches over the room and she watches as the video plays. Stella, what the hell is this? Did you film it? Was that Gretchen at the end? Stella, where's Gretchen? I'm gonna just say she didn't make it. That seems better. She didn't make it. Stella, I'm so sorry. It's okay, I'm fine. Might as well know what did this to her. Unfortunately, if these creatures are what I think they are, what happened to Gretchen is about to start something far more sinister. My grandmother called these ditchlings, and they're terrible omen, a sign of great suffering and destruction to come. Mom, come on, this is seriously, this is serious. Stop scaring Stella and Nebby with these telepo crap. I don't know what that word was. She just lost her dog. Have some respect. Kanika, sweetie, let your mother talk. And she was just like, oh, ha ha ha. Bitch, be coy. <laughs> Sorry, that's a little harsh, ain't it? <laughs> These creatures themselves are harmless to people, despite their grisly scene in the woods. But just as birds flock before a storm, the ditchlings congregate when tragedy is soon to fall. You mean tragedy hasn't fallen yet? Oh, I'm so not ready. <laughs> to see one is to be cursed by fate. To see many in one place is... Sybil holds her silence. Jesus, Mom, they clearly had a rough night. They don't need this. It's okay, Kanika. This is helpful. Stella, whatever these are, they aren't magic. We can't rule that out. Not after what we saw. Then I was like, these things, like, are not normal. And you're just like, nah, it can't be that. Then what the fuck are they, Kanika? What the fuck are they? Fine, let's focus on what we know. Whatever they are, they're doing something to these animals. You saw that nest. Where are those... What were those groves? Mm, maybe they're making more of themselves. Yeah, maybe that's what we're seeing here. Some sort of parasitic larva stage. Part of their life cycle. But I don't want to jump to any conclusion about something that... Something this out there not without doing some research or talking to a biologist I'm sure there's a rational explanation and I'll clear all this up for us oh yes you know that mysterious creatures that happen to be white making howling noises that sound oh so beautifully great I don't want to know what they are please and thank you and keep them away from me if you could Mwah. lovely thanks oh dear forgotten entirely about the tea I put on. Let me fix you a couple of cups. It'll help soothe your nerves. I don't know, it's getting late and I should let Nebby get some rest. I ran her ragged... I ran her... I ran her rage down... Rage today with all the hiking and running through the woods in terror. I'm gonna hold you! After seeing what I've seen, I, I think... I'm pretty wired, and I don't think I can sleep. Huh, okay, maybe it's that I'm eager to get home and start doing some research. I 
I'll ask around on my usual form to see if anyone has information on ditchlings, if that's what you call them. That's right, you can go home now and do try to get some rest. Don't stay up all night or online. How am I supposed to sleep knowing that these things exist? <laughs> Let me get some of my house-made peppermint tea to go. It really does wonders to soothe the soul. Bye, Stella. I'll see you tomorrow, and call me if you need to talk. Thanks, Kanika. I'll see you. Bye, Nebby. It's excellent ice are warm. Though these nights... Though with the nights getting chillier, warm will probably be best. Help wakes up the bones. There was this creepy man that was out here. I don't think I should be out here, but you know, sure would not put me in danger. Be careful out there, both of you. Sybil turns and he closes the door behind her. Alrighty, let's head back home. My home, I mean. And here we are. You're welcome to stay tonight if you want. Um. I don't want to leave her alone, but I also need to make sure my cousin's okay. Because I just got here and I just ran off to get in trouble, so I'm like... I should probably head back and check on Tabitha. That's sweet of you. Are you sure you're gonna head back? You okay to head back to that mountain alone? Um. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm gonna go and be brave. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll be okay. Well, I won't stop you if you really want to go back. Here's my number. Call me when you get there and good luck. You and Stella exchange numbers. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, you know, we're in this together. Even though we're not, I'm not really, I don't want to leave her alone and make her feel like she's doing it herself. So I guess we're hooked for the ride, people. Stay safe, buddy. She's in that big house by herself. You begin the long hike back into the Scarlet Estate alone. Can you down the path? Yeah, better leave me alone. Almost home. This looks much creepier than the woods. Your salvation in sight. You made a mad dash to the door. Ah, uh, how about I knock? As you raise your arm, the door swings open. At least we're a good cousin. Where the hell have you been? Uh. I called you back as soon as I had a reception. Did you? I didn't notice. I... Do you know anyone named Wayne? I have no idea what you're talking about. I want to say I look- I got suckered into something weird. Look, I guess I'm thinking this is something weird. Sorry to worry you. The Stella girl had me come to her on this night to hike to find cryptids. Ah, uh, so you met Stella then. That explains everything. And she's gotten you all worked up. I'm going to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh... It's late, and I'm pretty sure she doesn't want to hang out. But I'm kind of worried. So, um... You don't want to hang out? I'm still a little hyped up of adrenaline from tonight, and I would love to hang out for a little while just to cool down a bit. No, I'm not going to hang out with you. It's late. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Don't do any stupid while I'm asleep. Just go to your room and sleep. You know, she's so wonderful, but I understand. It's late, and I just came back, and I'm asking a lot of her, apparently. You're alone in the estate. The sound of the wind whistling through the house gives you an uneasy feeling in your gut. Probably best to turn in and try to leave the night behind you. As you head into your room, you remember that Stella asked you to call her once you got back. Call her! Hey, how are you? She sounds a little different, like she's been crying. Did you make it back alright? Yeah. Are you okay? She's probably crying for Gretchen. That's so sad! Totally fine. I mean, as fine as I could be, I guess. You don't have to worry about me. Go get some Z's, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Poor baby. I feel so terrible now. From the 
relatively safe of your uncomfortable bed. The events of the past evenly seem like something had happened to someone. Oh my god, I'm reading terribly. From the relatively safety of this uncomfortable bed, the events of the past evening seemed like something that had happened to someone else. Though you can still picture, still clearly picture the terror you felt in those moments, for now you're safe and you're warm. Eventually the sun will rise and chase away the monsters and you'll make them seem like nothing but bad dreams. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow if you're lucky, you'll wake up in a normal world and have a boring week in the mountains with your sour-faced cousin. It's a nice thought, but deep down you can't help but worry with that things will only get worse. Ooh, nice animation. I like how it's drawn. This is all really nicely drawn. Like, I like the atmosphere of it. Like, the colors are very muted. Oh my god, who's that? And what is going on? Last time when I saw this, I saw part of this, um, it wasn't really, there wasn't really music to it, so this is nice. the windows aren't there anymore that's kind of interesting I don't even know if that was the beginning or if that was just part of it because that seems like episode one cool we did episode one if you'd like to continue with this is saving world 2 please save your game now I'm going to save I'm gonna put this into this one. This is the empty slot that we go to, and then we'll do chapter. I might do chapter two some other time. Um, so I'm just gonna go and quit. Yep. So that was Garland um, Hollow. It was.